They don't want what we know out there. I was on CNN calling the crash of 2008. I said, Lehman's going down. You can check it out. And we had Gene Chatsky, who represents Wall Street, you know, the, the, the mutual funds and 401k guys. She goes, so. First of all, let's go back to what is financial education? It's not get a job, work hard, save money, and invest in a well-diversified portfolio, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs. That's not it. The financial industry is two things, debt and taxes. Debt and taxes. And that's where fake starts. 1971, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard and the US dollar became debt. And we still tell kids to go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, and get out of debt. Now, who tells them to do that? That's the most ridiculous thing there is. Why would you save it and why would you work for it if they can print it as faster than you can work for it? And, and number two is they keep dropping the interest rates on it. And I went to fly for the US Marine Corps in Vietnam. And the military education is different than academic education. We're taught to make mistakes. You know, so every day I'd fly and we had, to, we had to kill the engine on our aircraft and crash. We always practice crashing because one day, as you know, you will crash. And you did crash. And I did crash three times. But if I didn't practice that, I'd be dead. So what happens to the average person in a financial crash, they don't know what to do. And right now, as you know, for the middle class of the world, we're in a crash. The, you know, the, the purchasing power of the, of the yen, the euro, the rupiah, all going down. And people are working harder and harder and harder. And the central banks of the world are printing more money. Interest rates, you know, Trump just told the Fed, don't you raise those interest rates. Well, that screws all the savers. Right, and everyone hears the economy's doing great and the stock market's up, but the middle class and the poor are having a harder time. Correct. Right. And that's why, that's why I write and I speak. And so if someone's listening to us that's stuck in that poor middle class trap and they hear it's their fear that ultimately is keeping them from that, that's a hard thing to hear, Robert. <laughs> but you're gonna give them the information about what they can do if they can get out of that fear. Well, every time I, you know, I do a lot of speaking to the masses out there, you know, Lehman doesn't invite me in because we're gone, but they go, well, what, what, what you're saying is risky. And I said, what I do isn't risky for me, but it's risky for you. And when somebody says, what is risk? You have to look in the mirror. Do you know what I mean? For me to fly in Vietnam, that was high risk. But the higher the risk, the more you have to study. So if you're not going to study, you're not going to practice and all that, then you should do what Wall Street tells you to do. Buy 401ks, mutual funds, ETFs and all that. But that, that's where they're fake assets because they only make Wall Street or the city of London rich. Just watch where the cash is flowing. Follow the money. Yeah. It's not making the poor middle class rich. You know, all Wall Street in America has done is rip off the pensions because, you know, pensions are the biggest pool of money in America. And states like Kentucky, New Jersey, Illinois, California, Hawaii are going bankrupt because Wall Street went in and just sucked all the cash out of their pensions. So the school teachers like my dad, the firefighters and police officers, they have no retirement now. And so that's why it's fake money, fake teachers, fake assets. They're the same system. So why do they take dollar off the gold standard? And what does this mean? What don't we know? So what that meant was in 781, they could print as much money as they wanted. So as the economy of the United States worsened, you know, the deficit, trade deficit was going up, they could print and print and print and print. So that's why if you read, when you read fake, it says the people that are being screwed today are the poor middle class because they work for money. You know, the banker press, they're not working for money. They have money working for them. Yep. Right. Very big difference in mentality here. So we have, in America today, we have, you know, even Ray Dalio of Bridgewater, one of the biggest hedge fund guys in America, he's saying this gap between the rich and everybody else is too wide. Well, you could have seen that back in 1972, because the moment you corrupt money, the very thing that everybody works for, saves, counts on, they were screwed anyway. And our school systems, fake money, fake teachers, fake assets, part of that same system. Government, education, Wall Street, or City of London.
And you know, in in uh, Paris today, they have the yellow jackets. Yeah, the protesters. What's going on right in there. America today are red for Ed. All these school teachers are putting on red T-shirts because they know they're being screwed. They're protesting and all this. Their pension plans have been sucked dry by Wall Street. And what do they do? They put hedge fund managers in to manage the pensions. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. You put a hedge fund guy in to manage the biggest pot of money called the school teachers, firefighters, and police officers' pensions? They just sucked all the cash out of it. And the teachers are going, what happened to us? But because they don't know anything, it's red for it. They're out there protesting in mass all over the United States. But you don't hear about it. They talk about the yellow jackets. They don't talk about red for it. So this whole thing is coming apart right now. And it goes back to the question I have, I have always asked, why doesn't our school teach us about money? Because Wall Street won't let them. You know, when I was in flight school, my instructors could fly because I flew with them. But in school, you don't know if your instructor is for real or not. That's where the fake teacher comes from. When I was in my MBA program, I was still in the Marine Corps. Back then, this, this is 73 now, and the students were spitting on me, yelling at me, University of Hawaii, you know. Wow. I'm, I'm there, I was stupid enough to go in my Marine Corps outfit, my, my flight suit. And they're yelling at me, baby killer and all this. I'm sitting in this classroom and my MBA accounting teacher doesn't know accounting. And I'm going, I'm going nuts. I'm not an accountant, but I knew he wasn't an accountant also. So I took him on. I said, I said, are you an accountant? He goes, I have a master's in accountancy. I said, that's not the question. Are you an accountant? I have a master's in accountancy. And I stood up and I said, you know, Marines are not the brightest guys. I said, Do you have a, are you an accountant? Same answer. I said, you're a fake. You don't know what you're talking about. And to this day, when I listen to what people are teaching kids about accountancy, it's bad accountancy. It's confusing. You know, assets put money in your pocket. Liabilities take money from your pocket. They count anything of value as an asset. They count your car as an asset. Your house as an asset. When it's really taking money from your pocket. Your retirement plan, guess what? It's a liability. It's taking money from your pocket every month. And whose pocket does it go to? Wall Street. And that's why these funds, you know, they sit there, they go, assets under management. That's what they're paid on. You're not, you're not making any money, but they're making fortunes on the fees and assets under management. And most of these hedge fund guys and all that, you're not making any money, but they're sucking the fees out every day. And most poor people confuse assets for liabilities. They think their home is an asset, it's actually a liability. Right. And, and again, that's why I was yelling at the accounting teacher. I said, an asset is a noun, like a house. Cash flow is a verb. So to understand if it's an asset or liability, it, it takes a noun plus verb. So if the cash is flowing out of your pocket, it's a liability. If the cash is flowing into your pocket, it's an asset. So I own 7,000 rental properties. Those are assets. Every month, the cash flows in. Whereas many people have the big house on the hill and the cash is flowing out and they're going broke. The other thing the poor don't understand is the number one expense for most people is taxes. Well, the reason the rich don't work for money is number one expense is tax. See, there's three kinds of income. Earned, portfolio, passive. So earned income is if I get a job, that's earned income. If I'm a doctor or a programmer, that's earned income because I'm working for it. If I buy, let's say, Apple for $10 and I send it for 20, that's portfolio income, capital gains. Yeah. But passive income, which is cash flow, is never taxed. And so all these guys are screaming right now in America, tax the rich, I said, good luck. Because most of the guys complaining, they don't know there's three kinds of income and the rich don't have jobs anyway. They have assets. And so the average schmo out there, a poor guy, you know, sent the kid to school. They don't learn this. So that's why in fake, as you were talking about it, there's that newspaper article about Jared Kushner. Yeah. And he explains how the Trumps and the Kushners don't pay taxes and make millions of dollars. And the reporter couldn't understand him because our schools will never teach you that three types of income. The tax laws are for everybody to use if you have the right financial education. 
And the reason I'm an advocate of financial education, without that education, you'll have to pay taxes. You see, very few people will buy what I do, make a million dollars and pay zero tax. McDonald's is in the real estate business, so they sell hamburgers, but they buy real estate, so they pay no taxes. You know, this guy Basil, he's he's $16 billion. How much tax do they pay on that $16 billion? Zero. When I came back from Vietnam in 73, my poor dad said, get your MBA. And my rich dad laughed. He said, you're going you're gonna to turn out to be an employee. Who else hires guys with MBAs? You know what I mean? He, he was just pragmatic about it. He says, if you really want to be a rich, take a class on real estate. And I said, why is that? He says, once you understand real, real estate is based on debt. And he says, you will learn how to use debt as money. Because that's what happened in 71. The U.S. dollar became debt. So once you learn how to use debt as money, you can never say, I can't afford it. After the crash of 2008, the banks gave me $300 million tax-free to buy real estate that the idiots had lost. I hate this, and they were idiots because the prices were so high. Why would you buy it at the top of a market? Don't you know that's going to crash? They all, oh, no, no. This is, you know, that was the subprime, was the derivatives market. That's, MBSs and all that stuff, had driven the price of real estate so high and the rest of us were just waiting. And then when the whole thing came crashing down, all this real estate was now available and they needed, you know, the, the Fed and those guys in the Treasury needed guys like us to go in there. So Wall Street gave us hundreds of millions of dollars to mop up all that real estate these guys had lost. Now, it's fair because everybody could do it. When I ask the average guy, why don't you use debt? They can't even get a loan because their scores are so bad. So that, that's what's going on in the world today. It's fake money, fake teachers, fake asses. The school teachers will never tell you that because they don't know it. My poor dad never knew that. They think the rich are crooks. The rich just play by different laws. So now we have the stock market, this one area of the economy, all-time highs floating on fake money. Real estate, I mean, I don't know how people can afford to live. You know, in, in New York, I was looking at a condo for $55 million. You know, real estate in Silicon Valley, you, you can't afford to live there. And then all these companies started borrowing money, so the, so the economy's good, in, you know, unemployment's low and all this. They say there's no inflation, but have you seen the price of food, real estate, and student loans, and medical? It's a bubble, you know? So now what's going to happen is the baby boomers, my generation, are going to start to retire. There's no money there. Social Security is broke. Pensions are broke. Uh, student, the students are broke. You know, we, they're screwing everybody with debt. This is called not economics. This is called bubble-nomics. But they'll never teach you this in school. And why do they keep printing money? Because they want to save something. Because it's an addiction. You know, this is like heroin. The moment you take that one hit, they say, okay, I'll quit next week. And the economy gets worse, so they can they go. Trump gave us a tax cut in America. This thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So what happened in 2008, they stopped it by printing money. So we, they call it the Great Recession. But they didn't really fix anything. You know, derivatives went from $700 trillion to $1.2 trillion today twice as much. And that is net, you know, that's not, doesn't tell the whole story. So when the recession hit, the PhD standard came in, that was Bernanke, you know, and then Yellen, the PhD said, they have PhDs. Well, it's no different than long-term capital, LTCM. They had Nobel Prize winners, people like my poor dad, academics, you know. This is what's going on in the world economy today. So the baby boomers are going to retire now. Student loans are bust. So do you have to be an economist to say what's going to happen? We're fighting a 12-year war now. Entitlements are going through the roof. National debt to GDP is 109 in 109%. 90% is too late. We have to keep printing now. So this is called bubble-nomics, and this is what's going to happen. <laughs> Scary stuff. It's happened throughout history.